Hey guys, Richard, uh, riding through, or rather not, uh, once again did my latest Star Wars book reviews from the uh, from the dog walking uh, route, like I did with a few before. So yeah, this is uh, this is kind of an all in one, like the entire series. So anyone's not read Republic Commando, then like any of the five, well, four books plus Imperial Commando, which is basically part five. Don't watch this with you. Um, I'm not going to mention any other Star Wars books at all. It's really just this series, but uh, yeah, <laughs> due to the way it ended, I just thought. Nah, it's just the whole thing in one go. Um, good series and all, but there's not enough points to really mention individually. I think we're really, really worth it. So, uh, here we go. So, um, yes, so, basically, this is the Clone Wars era Republic Commando. Um, it involves basically two squads, Delta and Omega. So, Delta Squad is actually from the Republic Commando Xbox game. Um, you know, just played the demo, never played the whole game. But, uh, yeah, people seem to like it. I thought the didn't think it was that great. But, uh, maybe in 05 it was. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... Delta Squad are from them, but they, I don't think they're main characters. It feels like Republic Commando's main characters are from Omega Squad, which were created for this, as far as I know, created for this uh, this book series. So, basically, let's get into it. So, Clone Wars have started. This which covers the entire era, beginning of Clone Wars, well, maybe a few months in it, to the Order 66, and then, to include the Imperial Commando book, it then covers the um, Empire. Like, I don't know. Timeline-wise, it's kind of set after the Dark Lord, Darth Vader book, so probably a, the last book might be back. A year into like the Empire's reign, maybe no, it can't be a year, maybe maybe half a year. It's, um, so yeah, it's these four books. So you've got your main characters, mainly the clones, um, good characters. Um, you've got that clone commander, Cal Scarata, who's a Mandalorian. Because, um, spoiler for canon Star Wars, this is the era where Jango Fett was actually a Mandalorian. Um, whereas they changed it, I don't know why, to him just being a cobbled soldier in uh, later books, uh, uh, so later canon era. So, uh well, my dog needs tugging. That dog. <laughs> yeah, this is so. Yeah, Cal Squat as the um, Mandalorian commando, who's basically taking them all in, which has his sons. Um, got a few Jedi. Um, got, uh, the main Jedi is a woman called God. Oh, Etain. And then you've kind of got their like main Jedi, like Jedi Master Commander, which is called uh, General Zay. I think Argelan might be his first name. Um, yeah, so it's loads of Jedi appear in there. There's odd references to like the more famous Jedi, like Obi Wan, Quinn and Voss, who's big from the Clone Wars era books, um, and of course the Clone Wars TV show. It's really about the uh, about the clones, like their story and uh, how not all the Jedi are saints. So basically, it goes like this: um, Etain gets together with one of the clones, Darmin, and basically secretly ensures she'll get herself pregnant. Um, the baby is basically taken away because they're convinced that the Jedi Council will like force the child to become a Jedi, which is absolutely insane. Um, so Cal Skrata, the leader, basically takes them. They don't even tell Darman until like like a year after Charles has been born, even after he's made contact with a child, which is, just feels kind of wrong. And so, of course, Etain gets killed like most of the rest of the Jedi by the point of Order 66. It's incredibly dumb. Um, basically, she... Uh, so... And yeah, the... Um, it basically ends with the other clones because none of the main clone characters are killed in this book. Uh, this book series kind of plot armoury, to be honest. But uh, yeah, what do you expect? This author is a massive bias to, against the Jedi and towards the Mandalorians, which you'll notice. So, yeah, um, this is the problem. The book series should be. It's called Republic Commander. You think it would focus on, you know, the Republic's history? Yeah, you got the war. You know, you got mentions of Jedi, Sith, etc. But so much of it is about the history of the planet Mandalore and their culture. I mean, credit to the author. She made a cool like language various like phrases for like of words like they put a dic like a dictionary in the first three books and by then she kind of know what each phrase means it doesn't really matter um hang on boy um come on come on come on <laughs> trying to think of what good things are really worth mentioning it's like yeah first three books are pretty good you've got like espionage you know them t you know take liberating and taking back conquered planets etc but then it kind of gets into the uh the Jedi are villains angle. Like, I get that all the clones won't always be best friends with the Jedi. I mean, not obviously not every Jedi cares like they uh they should. <laughs> but the way they like treat like treat them as if like even the most popular Jedi like, everyone are bad guys is insane. And it just comes to a head when the uh, Sith are basically treated as better than the Jedi. It's like the it's the whole you know, the Jedi, the Jedi Council just uh, didn't ask questions, just put a, just a blind eye to everything that was going on while um the Sith, well, the Sith Lord Palpatine, who basically set the whole thing up, created like millions of clones, just let him die, you know, his own personal war, just get whatever he wants, he's somehow not as bad. So, once you start getting to that stuff, you think, this is just really dumb, and like, come on, someone should have reined this uh, author in. 
and it basically ends with the clones all separated. Um, some of them basically go to the planet Mandalore, and some are like part of the Imperial Army by the end, because of course, during all 66, some get separated. So, yeah, the uh, <laughs> head of the anti Jedi stuff basically attain like plans to like sneak off Coruscant with a lightsaber. Don't think that that will be checked because, of course. Not all the clones are going to like, keep her alive because, and this is kind of missed opportunity. None of the Republic Commando main characters turn on the Jedi. Um, I think when a team would be killed, some of them would, and it caused like a massive like war between the main characters. But no, none of that happened whatsoever. She basically dies defending a clone from a Jedi because it's just a really stupid bit where she sees that this clone's about to be killed. Yeah, after they basically open fire on two very young Jedi children, and she's like. Basically, no, this clone is a living man. I can't let him die. It's like, it's a WTF. Like, the clone is a living man. Okay. So, yeah, a living, breathing man. What about the Jedi child who is they're trying to kill? <laughs> These are also the exact same clones that have like, been in the Jedi Temple as well in the attack, not the off-planet ones. And basically, yeah, okay, I get it. The other clone is a living, breathing person. But he is the one opening fire on a couple of, like, three Jedi children. It's like, that Jedi child is just defending himself. And... So the clone is a living, breathing man. What? So the child isn't a living, breathing well, boy. It's just unbelievably dumb. And of course, all the clones then like murder all the Jedi there. And it's just, it's just so ridiculous. And you think, you know, we knew it would be killed, but to go like that, saving a clone from a Jedi, the clone that's trying to kill the Jedi. Oh, it's just so awful. And you just think, why is this being written like that? Again, not all the clones need to be best friends to Jedi. I was actually looking forward to that angle being explored, but they really just screw it up in the worst way imaginable and yeah book one two three are good because that it's there's no bias against jedi there but by books one five yeah order 66 oh it's there in full force and you just think what was she thinking of um i mean it's not all bad like i said first three books are pretty good i love the mandalorian culture and like the basically the mandalorian dictionary but again it's that's all it's about the bad dog he's in grass huh anyone got any tips to stop that by all means let me know <laughs> um but yeah, and it's just completely ridiculous. And she is actually the writer of three of the Legacy of Force books, which is actually my next Star Wars series, and probably around January, February. Well, Darkness, which, like, prologue comes first. But yeah, well, I'm not looking forward to her books. So I've already heard some dodgy things in there. But uh, yeah, there's just so much wrong that it just killed my enjoyment of the series completely. Like, books one, two, three are easily eight and nines, but book four, just the ending, just how bad it gets. Like, good example, Barden Jusik. He's like a former Jedi, uh, Jedi general. He's like a Jedi knight. Good character, you know, I liked him. You know, he, he empathizes with the clones a hell of a lot. He, and yet, there are similarities between the clones that are being created to be forced into order of the Jedi, being given by the families to become you know, Jedi as well. There's, there's similarities there, I'm no doubt about it. But the way he just turns on every Jedi, like one random Jedi comes up to him at the beginning of the book, Order 66, and says to him, You know, you know we need all, you know, senses him because he's a Jedi, despite he's wearing Mandalorian armor. And he's like, You know, come on rejoin we need every Jedi coming there's this terrible darkness on the way I can sense it and Barden is like yep if you think it's us yeah I can sense it as well I don't know what it is but there's something like something ominous like creeping up on us and he's like no I don't think so go back to your war Jedi it's like come on seriously oh and in, in the order 66 like when the word gets around what have you know Palpatine's story a bunch of Jedi tried to you know assassinate Palpatine and like they're all dead you know Mace Windu included and Etienne's response is why would the Jedi do that it's like what? Like, not like, no, it's not true, this can't be right. The only thing that makes sense is who'd kill Mace Windu. And that's kind of the problem with the whole thing. Like, did like, yeah, Anakin is like, eventually becomes Darth Vader's figure in black, who no doubt had been claimed was his like bodyguard who like killed the Jedi for him. But before that, when Anakin is the Jedi who's like just been killed with the rest of them, it's like, <laughs> I've no idea how that meant to be. But hey, that's the issue with the uh, saga. No one asks questions. Um, so yeah, massive problems. Um, you know, the whole, the Sith are better than the Jedi. No, come on. It's, uh, yeah, a poor book, so it starts so well, but... And then, of course, it doesn't even end. The final book basically got... Uh, the author decided not to, so... Yeah, interesting story. Basically, they... Lucasfilm came up with the... Um, oh, my dog looks a bit worn out now. Don't have still a lot more walking to do. Still a lot more. There he is. <laughs> yeah, so, um, basically, the Clone Wars TV show came out. There was already a Clone Wars one, the really short three minutes, like, 23 minutes, and then five 20-minute episodes, which were obviously awesome, tied into episode three perfectly. And then, of course, that got changed, you know, got redone for, like, a big, full-on series set a few months after episode two. I like think episode series one is valid. Um, you know, it starts with Anakin looking like he does in episode three, pretty much, and, yeah, because series one of Clone Wars led to all that, but 
the Clone Wars starts. But yeah, basically the author didn't like that everything they were doing in Clone Wars, such as changing Mandalorian's history. You know, no Mandalorian trainers teaching Clone Army. She basically got the hump and left. I, I felt bad for the beginning, but then you look into it, everyone knows your stuff isn't canon. It's only the films and then official TV shows. She may have been told this is practically canon, but it wasn't. Yeah, she basically quit, but credit to her, she actually gave us the ending. You know, she told everyone on her webpage what would have happened. Like, you got clones built. I'll give you this info now if you want to. So, don't want to um, hear this stuff. Switch the video off, but uh, I'm going to put it in now. So basically, you've got like the next wave of clones. Again, these are all the ones that attach to her temple, which again clashes with canon, which we know, like Battlefront game, which is practically canon says they just all got shipped in secretly off world then but these are basically clones born to maturity in one year which is quite a barbaric practice because i always even teach a clone like military stuff in that time let alone okay they get grown to adulthood in a year like a doctor episode i watched yesterday uh, a couple days ago but yeah how are you going to teach them all this stuff in such a short time but basically one of those clones Kalsko ends up killing because he's uh, unable to he doesn't like view him he's basically pro pro empire not pro soldiers and um the other thing is, this is one of the plots I did like. Um, Carl Scarato is basically, he's basically pulled off a scam where he's got, he's basically stealing from every bank account in the galaxy, like basically one credit, like one pound from every account he figures. No banks will ever investigate that because the sheer amount of hassle, oh, you got like, yeah, they'll refund every customer, sure. The ones that notice it, trust me, working in a bank, people would. <laughs> but yeah, would they really want to go through disputes to get a pound back, all the banks, plus there's multiple banks, not one master bank. Basically, yeah, he's stealing from them one credit from like every bank account. Not to mention he's got millions from a um, inheritance. So, uh, yeah, he's basically using that his good use, finding out a way to stop the accelerated ageing in clones. And I really like that because it's true. These clones may be built so, like, basically, their ageing has been doubled. You know, they can be... Because Attack of Clones are 10 years after Phantom Menace. So they've basically been born beginning of... Um, just after Phantom Menace. And then they're adults 20 years in... You know, 10 years later. And it's kind of horrible when you think about it. Yeah, that's good good production. You get the results. You, know, they, you get your army in adulthood and fighting skills in 10 years but what happens after well they're going to age at half the rate um you know you know they're going to live till that plus fighting in wars is going to cause you know, going to harm them so really let's say the average in like star wars era is like age for like i don't know 80 90 you're looking at 40 45 but being soldiers may be less because of the effects of battles everything they've done so yeah it's kind of harsh that they've got no real long-term future and they do a good job showing that the clones really have no rights they're just property of the republic they've got no like birth certificates, passports, nothing like that. And yeah, Carl Skrar is desperately trying to stop that. It's a good idea, but it turns out he would be unable to do it. And it's a shame I would have liked to have read that book because it's like all the baddest and I, mean, I skimmed massive chunks of four and five because of this. I just, I've read them before. One to three I'd never read, so I read every word. But yeah, four and five got a bit depressing with the anti-Jedi stuff. Um, so obviously it's, it's there. Um, but yeah, overall it's a good series, but yeah, of course they couldn't stop at three, but if the same strengths of the first three books had carried over and none of the whole Jedi are bad, you know, you know like Zay even says to Scott, Cal, Cal Scarati, you know, the Sith are evil, you know, Cal, we, they're responsible for every war in the history. It's, oh, don't get on your high horse. You know, the Jedi are worse. Like, how, he basically says, how are the Jedi worse exactly? Like, you turned a blind eye to the creation of this army and didn't think about the clones' rights. So, but Palpatine, the Sith, created the entire army just so he could basically have them all die. So he could take over the Republic for himself. Like, do you honestly not think that makes him the villain? And it's like, no, it's like, come on, this is just bad writing, full stop. So yeah, if you can ignore that stuff, you'll probably enjoy the series and it's good to see a different take on like the clones. Um, we never really had anything like it before, but overall, yeah, it the way it ends kills the series completely. It turns it from, I don't know, a six, seven out of ten to easily a three out of ten. It really is that bad how it ends, but yeah, I'd recommend giving it a go anyway. Plus, they're actually reprinting them. Um, there's an Essential Legends series now where basically they, they realise how good the Legends, as they rebranded the EU, are and have been redoing book by book. And yeah, they've basically done a series along with single ones like the Thorn Trilogy, the X-Wing uh, Quadrilogy. And now I'm not surprised you've got Republic Commando. So definitely give it a go. And I guarantee you like the first three books, but it's just, you might like the four and five, but where it goes is a problem. But yeah, that is it then. So long video, but hey, it was coming five vids in one. So that's it. So yeah, I will see you next time.